welcome to another episode of Salk Nation TV and in this episode we're going to be looking at the MTC intercooler. Is it hobo or is it not? Is it actually pretty good? So here we have the MTC intercooler. Look at that lovely black and red themed bay there in my R53. So before we get down to is this intercooler any good or not, what we really need to do is talk about the more popular options. So when we're talking about intercoolers, there's a lot of phrases that get brought up. IATs, ACTs, what are they? What do they mean? Well, IATs are intake air temperatures. ACTs are air change temperatures. So this is what the intercooler is really going to do when, when it's working well. The need to keep those air temperatures to the lowest operating temperature that's possible. And by having a good quality intercooler, this is possible. So. I'm only going to be looking at top mount intercoolers. I'm not going to talk about front mount intercoolers like the AirTech front mount because that includes a air delete and who really wants to do an air delete? I know I don't. So top mount intercoolers, the most popular ones. Well, we've got the classic Hobo, the unbranded Chinese manufactured intercooler. It's usually 60 to 62 millimeters in its core thickness. And uh, you know, it's unbranded. It looks to be fair, a bit like my MTC intercooler, if not exactly like that. But that doesn't mean that that's a hobo or not. We're going to discuss that throughout. So, but let's start with the hobo one. Usually priced around 89 to 110 pounds. It is, you know, quite a lot cheaper than let's say the GP intercooler, which uh, the 2006 model of the R53 had a, a, an intercooler that is now still selling secondhand at around a thousand pounds, which is that a little bit silly? I think it might be. Then you've got the AirTech. Now, the AirTech intercooler seems to be probably the most popular and most accessible intercooler when you're paying more than, let's say, £300. And it's got its own air diverting wing. It comes with its own sort of scoop built to the front of it that helps filter the air through your bonnet scoop. And it's got a 60 millimeter core thickness. I think people like them a lot because of the branding, you know, with that scoop that it's got, it says AirTech, so you can see that if you look through the, the, the bonnet scoop, and it's a good bit of kit. Lots of people judge it really well and really highly. Then you've got the GRS Motorsport top mount intercooler. Now that's usually between four, 410 pounds and like say 490, depending if you go for a powder coat finish. Again, it shares the 60 millimeter core thickness, but the main difference is that it has a welded diverter to help really push that air directly from the bonnet scoop into the intercooler. One thing that stands out even more about the GRS is not only do you have the main diverter, but you also have diverters between each row of tubes. So you're getting a lot of air pushed into it. And you know, the reports are, are true. So most people that I've met or, or have read from who have got a GRS motorsport intercooler say that it's a superb bit of kit and better than an AirTech. I mean, they're in the same price range, really. The GRS is a bit more expensive, but you know, it is what it is. And then you have the Pro Alloy. Now this is a unique bit of kit. It's priced over 500 pounds generally, has a 50 mil core thickness, which is similar, if not the same as the original intercooler that comes with the R53. And it has its own unique elbow that's machined and milled into the side, which connects directly to your supercharger. From what I can tell, I've not used a pro alloy intercooler. So if anybody else knows anything different, let me know, explain that elbow that's, uh, that's machined for it. And uh, yeah, let me know. And then we have the MTC Motorsport. <laughs> this intercooler I bought it just after I bought the R53 and I think it's a really good bit of kit <laughs> So the MTC Motorsport Intercooler has a 60 millimeter core thickness. It's kept my IATs down to the level that it needs to, so I've not had an issue with it that way. It's also, you know, I got a black one, so can't go wrong there really. But one of the most important things is these cars run hot. Mini Cooper S R53s generally run hot. And having a intercooler that keeps my engine bay temperatures down to the level that they need to be is hugely important especially when you're in the summer and it's generally really hot now does this mean that this is the best one to go for because i've got it definitely not yes in traffic i can see my uh, 
temperatures going up and I get a little bit concerned and then they kept back down to where they need to be which is great because it means I've got fully functioning fans and also a really good functioning intercooler. Is it the best? No, the quality is not the best. The I mean, as you can see from the clips, one is fine, the other is not fine. So, you know, construction-wise, build quality is there with general hobo intercoolers. It's not really that great. The rest of the construction, the welds are okay, they're fine, it fits perfectly in my supercharger horns and isn't really that big a deal. The horns from the supercharger hold it in place, so it's nice and stable, it doesn't move, it's good. So those clips aren't really that much of an issue, but it does kind of suggest the build quality isn't great. So what's my general impression or view of the MTC intercooler? Well, I think if you're on a budget, this one cost me £119, if you're on a budget, it's a great one to go for. It's a branded, let's say, hobo intercooler, but at least you've got that brand to fall back on. If there's an issue, you've got somewhere to go with it. So that's definitely a benefit, and for the price, I'm really pleased with it. So in summary, the MTC intercooler is a very good bit of kit for not a lot of money. Is it as good as some of the more expensive brands? Well, the AirTech core looks almost exactly the same as the MTC, a normal hobo intercooler, and a guarantee has been made in China as well. So, you know, for less than £120, I think I've probably got a good bit of kit as an intercooler. I've not had any problems with it. I am a very, let's say, spirited driver and it's not failed me to this point. I've had it on the car for over a year. Build quality, not great, but those clips that break off the front, it's a known problem generally with aftermarket intercoolers. So am I that surprised? Not really. Does it affect performance? Not really, but build quality could be better. If money was no object, what one would I buy from the list I've, I've spoken about? Well, it would definitely be the GRS Motorsport one. I think it looks amazing. All reports about it seem to confirm that it's a superb bit of kit. And I'd probably get it in black. So if you've enjoyed this episode of Salt Nation TV, please share and subscribe. Like maybe even, that would be nice. And until the next time, I've been me, you've been you, and well done for that.